Welcome back to Jen's Garage, I'm Chris, and we do the unboxing of the things a guy would like. Have you ever experienced earthquake? If you live outside the Californian area, you may not be able to experience earthquake, but that sounds more like a blessing. But even though, if an earthquake hits, do you know what to do? Mm. I'll give you three seconds to think. All right, is it dock and cover? No, we're no longer living in the nuclear age. It is down and cover. By down, it means stay down. And cover means to cover your head. And as soon as the earthquake stops, you're going to proceed to anything or anywhere that is safe. In 1999, in Taiwan, there was a very big earthquake. And I couldn't remember that because I was just a baby then. But my grandma told me that our family fled to a nearby park and we lived there for almost two weeks because my grandma is afraid that there might be any more tremors. And during that week, we have little to none water and food because we forgot to bring them on us. So we live on the aids of the government. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So today, we're going to talk about... Drum roll. The bug out bag. The bug out bag is something you take in an event of staying away or evacuate. And to bug out isn't like going on a field trip or a hiking. So here's a chart of what you should and shouldn't take on an event of bug out. I'll give you three seconds to think. Yeah, you're already smart. You know what to take and what shouldn't be taken. Because you can only take the essentials. And now we're going to see the exterior of this bag. This is a technical backpack, which means there is a lot of attachment points, molly, and two shoulder straps. With two shoulder straps, you can put it on your back very securely while you're running like this. If there's only one shoulder strap like this, it tends to shake on your back while you're running. So when you're choosing the color of your back, try to stick with bright and light. It is best if you can find an orange or bright yellow so the search and rescuers can see you from a distance. And now, we're going to see what's inside the bag. On this side, we have a tourniquet and an IFAK, Individual First Aid Kit, which is like a medical bag with everything or most things you need to save yourself. We have a cotton swab, gauze pad, another size of gauze pad, we have a medical tape and we have a cleansing solution ornament a bandage and another bandage and also a marker pen which is kind of important if you want to mark down the time on your tourniquet and to save yourself from getting hurt, I would recommend that you can put on a helmet or a pair of gloves. So this way you might reduce the chance of getting hurt in the events of bug out. And let's look into this small pouch on the outside. We have the communications here. We have a radio. Just imagine that this is a radio. And we also have an emergency blanket. Emergency blanket can reflect the sunlight to the direction of the search and rescue. For the communication part, you're going to receive and transmit information. You're going to receive the information from the government agency. For instance, what happened, where, and what happened, and where you have to go. And when you're transmitting or you're sending out a message, you're going to send out your location so the search and rescue can find you. And by receiving the message, you can use radio or your phone 
And these two are electronic items, so they need to be waterproof. So I put them in the zipper bags like this. And when you are sending out messages, you can use whistles or reflective surfaces of an emergency blanket. It is even better if you have a mirror. So this is the part of information. And now we're going to see the bigger bag what, and see what's inside. It is the food. When you're preparing the food, you're going to be preparing something that you can keep for a long time. You'll be trying to avoid, you know, like potato chips nope. or instant noodle. Nope. Because they took up too many spaces and they're not easy to prepare in any events of evacuation. So I would recommend something that does not need a lot of preparation when you're going to cook them, like canned food or ration biscuits, like these. And you have to check on them like every half an year or every few months. But the simplest way is to see the expiration date. Like this one is already gone expire. So I have to toss them away. And next, we're going to talk about the clothings. Before we go into the clothing, I have to give you a small quiz. Guess, how long can a person survive without any food? It is, yes, it is three weeks. And how long can a person survive without proper insulation when they're under harsh environment? Yes, it is three hours. What about water? It is three days. So remember that when you're talking about survival, there is a rule of threes. Three days without water, three weeks without food, and three hours without your body temperature. Now we're going to talk about the clothing. When you're preparing the clothing, you have to make sure that they're dry so they can provide a layer of dry air or air between you and the harsh environment. This way, you can stay warm because air is a very bad conductor of heat. As well as this emergency blanket, this can keep your body temperature up because it will block the radiation you emit. And lastly, we're going to talk about important documents because in any form of evacuation, the search and rescue have to know who you are or where you might have been living so they can take you back. And also, I would recommend to bring some cash with you because besides trading things with things, if you have some cash and the government hasn't collapsed, you can use the cash to purchase extra rations. And now, we're going to see the tools. Here we have a flashlight. The flashlights will be very important because it can send signals to the search and rescue, like this. And also you can walk at night without bumping into dangerous things. And here's a multi-tool, a Leatherman multi-tool. It can be opened and closed with just one hand, which will be very important because your other hands might be carrying other objects or it could even get hurt. So remember to bring something that you can operate with just one hand. And lastly, of all these things, when we pack them back into the bag, where are you going to keep them? Obviously, it is beside the door because whenever you're in your house, you're going to rush to the door so you can escape. So by keeping the bag beside the door, will be the best option so you can take it without any hesitation. And this is all for today. If there are any other equipments you would like me to do an unboxing or review, please comment down below. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. That's all for today. Thank you.